Okay, hello everyone. We've got Christina Klein here, artist extraordinaire. Um, so I guess my first question for you, Christina, is the title of this show is Domesticated. And you've become a new mother, right, in the time of the coronavirus. So how have both of those things affected your art? Well, obviously I'm staying home a lot more for both reasons. Um, so domesticated is just kind of the natural idea coming from that. And so just thinking about myself where I was a year from now or a year ago, or even farther back um, to where I am now, you know, it's very much home oriented, um, which has been its own unique experience. You know, thinking about how I can make the home cozy for my daughter and how I can organize, you know, my studio space. So when she starts crawling around, it's a little less, you know, precarious. Um, that's been a lot of things on my mind. Um, and also, you know, just from a very uh, surface level, you know, thinking about color schemes that I think she would enjoy, you know, kids are really attracted to really bright, vibrant colors. And so I think how I paint has changed a lot too, um, since having a baby and, you know, thinking about, you know, what actually someone that's drawn to just bright images would really enjoy looking at too. I love that. Yeah, it, the, the, the title domesticated makes me really think of um, like reclaiming domestication and then like the double meaning, the new meaning that comes with the coronavirus, like how we've all really become more domesticated, having to stay home all the time. So it really is a great title. Um, okay, so I heard that you describe yourself as a recycling painter. Do you think of these abstractions as non-objective or is there a recycle subject behind each one of them? Mm -hmm. Well, I always try to find recycled materials before I buy new. This is something that I'm really passionate about. And I hope it's something that, you know, more people take seriously. You know, I paint a lot and I work a lot. And so I try to make the sustainable practices I can. Um, and so I use a lot of canvases made from recycled textiles, things that I've collected, things that other people have, you know, kind of given me just, oh, I need to get rid of this. And I say, great, I can really use it. Um, for my last series at Benvi, uh, the canvas stretchers I used were made using wood from a, a house that I tore the floorboards up before it was torn down. Um, and so I was lucky to be able to do that. Um, I also used wood I got from construction sites. And so my kind of recycling aspect is kind of a meditative process, you know, thinking about what I can create with this new stack of wood or this pile of fabric and what story it can tell. Um, and so that's something really interesting. And it also kind of helps let fate decide what the painting is going to look like anyway, too. You know, when I use wood panels, that kind of um, tells me how big it's going to be based on what what's available versus, you know, what I can just buy new. Um, I also use a lot of oops paint. So I have that here too. And so that's another thing that fate kind of decides, you know, I pick colors that maybe I wouldn't normally pick based on what someone accidentally mixed or that kind of thing. And so I use those to prime my canvases. And so that kind of sets the mood for each painting too, you know, based on what I find, what I sew together. Um, and then what color is kind of available. And then from there, I use new paints that I buy from um, primarily Golden or Liquitex. But I think I feel a lot better knowing that, you know, I did a lot of that finding things and kind of seeing what happens. Wow. So like that ca canvas behind you is a found um, linen that you've sewn together? Yeah. So sometimes, you know, pants wear out and so I'll sew like Together, or you know a family member will redo the house and they'll give me their curtains and that kind of thing and so then I kind of sew them together um, and then that kind of becomes the canvas and so that for me has been a fun thing too you know I can just sew a lot and kind of keep my sewing skills sharp and just turn it into a canvas awesome okay well um we see that you have used lots of recycled material and recycled themes. Why does abandoned buildings specifically or aged things inspire you? I guess you've kind of answered that, but if you have anything else you want to expand upon, feel free. Well, yeah, that's something that 
again, you know, I find really interesting. I grew up in rural Kansas in the countryside. And so you see a lot of abandoned houses or barns out in the middle of a field. Um, and it's something that I just kind of grew up with and never really thought about until I left home. And then I came back and kind of started noticing things in a new way. And it made me really interested, you know, thinking about why they're abandoned or what people left behind. Um, and as I've traveled around and lived in different cities and that sort of thing, you know, I've noticed also different abandoned buildings and houses. And so it kind of started as my own kind of personal Kansas narrative, but it kind of grew into something a little bit more because this is a more universal theme. Um, and so I've used architecture from home or architecture that I've photographed and collected kind of wherever I happen to be. Amazing. So the next question is, do memories of growing up influence your painting at all? Yeah, so a lot of my work is kind of based on things that I've seen. Um, and so, you know, documenting the abandoned houses that kind of influence the start of my more architectural paintings. And then from there, I kind of started building abstract versions of those structures and then kind of reconfiguring them into maybe kind of a more imaginary structure that doesn't really exist in reality. Um, and so from there, actually, I started doing a lot of sewing too. And I kind of started thinking about these quilts as almost architectural pieces, kind of mimicking some of those more structural lines and then kind of using those as the new version of my still life. Um, so that's where my series kind of is now. You can kind of see this is more um, soft sculpture style and a little bit more organic shaped than some of my harder structures from before. And so it's just been kind of a fun process to kind of experiment with, you know, the painting in the background of your, in a, your screen versus the painting in the background of mine, you know, how different things can be just kind of based on slight shifts in how I work. Yes, yes. I love how different they are, but then again, like how closely linked they are because it's still like deconstruction and themes of mm -hmm. architecture and your color schemes are so similar. But yeah, it's, it's also really interesting to see the progression. Yeah, thanks. Um, okay, so some of your artworks are beautifully finished with designs made of combining different wood pieces, but would you like to describe it more in detail? Yeah, so again, it all kind of comes back to collection too. So I always, this is kind of how I teach too. I kind of surround my desk with stuff to talk about. Um, so, you know, I do a lot of collecting wood and then I kind of see what I can do with it. And so this is a little example of one of my earlier patchwork pieces where I just do a lot of cutting and gluing together. And so the pattern is made with just lots of wood that's just kind of been formed into a new kind of design. And actually this, I was just thinking about that when I was looking at this. I did a lot of woodworking before I started sewing. And so I actually think I sew kind of like I do my woodworking. And so when I sew, I really like to cut things into strips and then sew them together, cut them apart, and then kind of re-sew them together. And so I think, you know, how I build kind of influences how I paint. And then it kind of goes back and forth. And I try to paint how I build. Or, so it's kind of a fun little cycle of experimentation uh, in a way. And so when I do these pieces, you know, I have my wood panel. Here's another prop. Um, and so I try to have the side be a little more interesting with the found materials. And then I try to mimic those shapes on the image itself. So here the stripes kind of go back into the stripes on the side. And so it kind of has a conversation with each other and it just goes back to my love of materials and my love of building. I think almost I don't need to paint anything on here. Just building it itself is just such a joy. But then, you know, once I kind of explore the blank canvas and then what I create on top is kind of a fun experiment too. And just seeing where it can really progress. Awesome. Okay. Um, our next question is, you taught at FSU as a teaching assistant. Then you went to Europe for a Fulbright Scholarship Award. Awesome. And now you're working in Berkeley. Has teaching and traveling influenced your work at all? 
Oh, for sure. So, you know, seeing different architecture around has been really interesting. You know, there's such a difference between what you see in Kansas versus what you see in Berkeley or what you see in Nuremberg, where I lived. And so all of those things together kind of just morph into its own new idea. Um, I go through phases where I kind of follow those ideas a little more closely than others, um, but they're always kind of swimming in the back of my mind, too. Um, and teaching, as far as that's concerned, I think that's really changed my practice a lot, too. Um, before, I only taught sculpting and drawing, um, but this last year was the first time I taught a painting class. And so actually, I kind of filled in the gaps of my island of knowledge as well. You know, I used to kind of just attack paintings at random, um, but then learning how to teach how to paint has kind of made me, you know, step back a little and say, okay, maybe I can still kind of attack this painting, but do it in a little more focused way. And so now I kind of find myself considering, you know, color harmony and those kind of things that I, I really didn't think about before. And so that's been a lot of joy, um, just kind of thinking about those things. Um, and also, you know, teaching, I do a lot more painting every day, so I can kind of tell other people how to do it. And so I paint a lot of different subject matters so I can kind of teach them how to do it too. And so I think in a way I've improved myself and I think it's gonna kind of change the more I teach um, what I'm painting too, um, just because you know it has been interesting exploring different ideas that I haven't done in the past. Um, and so I think that's been a lot of fun. I've painted a skull for the first time ever. Somehow I went through all of art school not painting a skull. And then I sat down and said, I guess, you know, I need to paint this skull. And so, you know, that's been fun too, just thinking about things that I've learned and then things that I want to really pass on to other students too. Amazing. Um, okay, and then so your last solo show called Back Again at Venvi was in 2018, and the present solo show is Domesticated. How has your work changed since you did the ones in the last show, which we touched on a little bit? We have, this is, this one's from the past show, right? Okay. Yeah, so, you know, again, I kind of worked on more structural, hard elements, you know, thinking about architecture in the last um, show, you know, thinking about those houses in the countryside that I'm really inspired by. Um, but for this next show, I was kind of thinking about the inner workings of those houses, you know, the things that people may be left behind. And so how they decorated the walls, you know, fragments of wallpaper. Um, what makes a house a home, just kind of reflecting on that, which kind of has to do a little bit more with my quilting as well. Um, so I've done a lot of sewing to make these kind of still lifes that I then paint from and kind of light up in different ways. And so that's been a major change in my work. Um, so, you know, just thinking about how I can sew these and kind of reconfigure them into almost architectural forms. Um, that kind of resemble my past work, so it's not a great departure, but it's also taking it into a new and hopefully interesting um, direction as well. So you're creating these quilts that then you're using um, to paint. Do you ever display the quilts, like in a gallery or anything? You know, I haven't done too much of that yet. I really enjoy having these kind of flying or hanging. Um, and one note that I've gotten is that's really hard to do in other places. <laughs> so that's something that I guess I kind of do for myself right now, but it could be something that I kind of work on and kind of develop and sculpt more to kind of take other places too. Okay. Um, would you like to talk about your present deinstallation in the museum and the mural that you are creating in your home? Yeah. Um, so I recently had the opportunity to show some work um, at a museum in San Francisco. And unfortunately, you know, a lot of people didn't get to see it because of COVID, but it was still one of those nice things where it gave me a deadline and I got some work done for it. Um, and so I built some larger cardboard structures that I covered with fabric. Um, they kind of go back to the architecture forms and the image behind you, but kind of bridging the gap with the soft sculptures and the the fabric that I'm interested in now. And so those were kind of just hanging out in the living room for a while. I kind of just had them hanging there and I'd play with them and light them up and kind of see how they react during different times of day. So that was really interesting for me kind of developing that series. 
and then seeing how it looks in a museum setting. Um, so that was something that was kind of new for me. And then I guess I'll pause here. I don't know where I was going with that. What was the question? <laughs> no worries. No worries. Um, it was, um, oh yes. Would you like to just talk generally about your deinstallation in the museum oh. and the mural? Oh yeah. The mural that you're creating yeah. in your home. Okay. I'll get back to it. Okay. So yeah, so I kind of deinstalled the work there. And then I was thinking about how I could just kind of turn my own space into a more interesting setting, you know, going back to being home more and staring at blank walls and kind of looking at the possibilities. Um, and so I was thinking about how I could expand my quilts and kind of have them overtake the space that I'm living in now. And so since this is a new series, um, domesticated, I haven't really painted my quilts before. I thought I'll just work on it bigger and kind of use that as an exploratory moment. You know, I have a lot of lace in these quilts that when I'm painting smaller, I can't really explore as much or get into the fine nitty gritty details. And so when I blow it up, I can kind of look at those things and kind of pay more attention to some of the things that I find the most interesting. And so that's been fun and just thinking about how I can paint the next wall once I'm done with this wall. I've already talked to friends and family and asked if I can have a wall in their home. So my quilts are kind of taking over. And so that's been really fun thinking about how I can utilize each space and the architecture in each space to kind of tell the story in a different way, which kind of goes back um, to my show at Venvi this time my quilts, I kind of reimagined them in different landscapes. Some kind of have more of a waterfall feel because I thought the fabric had a little bit more flow. Um, this painting that I showed earlier, I was kind of thinking back to my time visiting Wakola Springs. And so I have a little bit of the landscape kind of interacting with the fabric and going back into the background and kind of going into its own world that doesn't exist in my still life reality. Um, and so that's what I'm trying to do with these larger ball paintings too, have them overtake spaces and become their own landscape. Yeah, I, that was really delightful reading that title. I love Wakula Springs. <laughs> hey, hey, I do too. I always think back to that place and seeing the manatees and just how much wildlife was there and just, oh, I always wish I was there right now. <laughs> Me too. And so is that lace, I see it right behind you to your left, is that okay. lace right there? Yeah, so I actually got a big collection of lace from my grandmother and so these are, this is kind of new too, I just started adding lace to my quilts. And so I'm kind of trying to figure out how to shape those in my soft sculptures, trying to figure out how to paint lace, which was a little more challenging than I originally thought, but it's fun to work it out on a large scale and then see what the possibilities are from there. Yeah. Awesome. Beautiful. I love that. Um, okay. And then our final question is, you know, the show was initially scheduled to be in person and then Brenda and you decided on making it an online show, considering the safety of everyone, the pandemic. Are you comfortable with online shows or would you rather have gallery shows? Like, do you look forward to the pandemic being over and showing more in person or have you um, been pleasantly surprised, surprised with the virtual showing of art that we've all had to, you know, transition to? Yeah, well, this has definitely been an interesting experience. I know Brenda and I kind of brainstormed in advance, you know, what we wanted to do, how we thought we could make it work, um, and what the best method of execution would be. And so it's been fun because, you know, I got to work on my paintings. I didn't have to worry too much, you know, about sending them anywhere. So the scale was kind of irrelevant, you know, they could kind of exist anywhere. And then I guess one of the benefits of showing in a gallery setting is seeing how your work interacts with the architecture or how someone else envisions your work being laid out, how they curate it. Um, but I still actually got to have that fun moment just seeing how, you know, Brenda organized everything digitally, how it looks on the website. So you still kind of get that nugget of newness. Um, and so that was really a unique experience. You know, as I was working on my paintings, I kind of did have moments where I thought to myself, you know, how would this look on a computer screen versus in person? Do I need to change things? Maybe not. And I usually 
kind of ended on the not changing things because I'm kind of a dinosaur. I like the old fashioned paint, paint on canvas. Um, but it was fun to kind of think digitally and at least consider, you know, how other people would see it. But I guess I do enjoy, you know, the fact that it is online because you can experience it anywhere um, and it can be seen by anyone at any time, which is really, you know, something that couldn't happen if it was in person. And so it's fun, you know, there's a little bit of this back and forth push and pull um, between wanting everything to be in person again, but then enjoying the benefits of things, you know, not being in person. Yeah, and excitingly, you've sold a few paintings already. And, um, you know, like when people come to my house and see my paintings on the walls, they're like, whoa, it's just so different than seeing them online. And I'm sure the people who have bought your paintings now are going to be so pleasantly surprised when they get them in the mail because, you know, as wonderful as art is on the screen, it's like a whole nother thing when you get it in, you know, in your own physical reality. So. Yeah, that's something I think about too when I work on my paintings, you know, how can the experience be more beneficial in person and so I think, you know, th playing with texture is one of those things because how these look during different times of day changes a little bit too or the light source. Um, there's always some kind of shadow painting almost with the seams of the canvas and that sort of thing. And so I think, you know, hopefully that is a fun experience to kind of see it in person once people have kind of experienced it on screen. Definitely. Okay, Christina, well, um, all of our questions are finished. Is there anything else you wanted to say about your show or how you've been lately or anything else? Or do you feel good about it? I feel good about it. So this has been fun. <laughs> good. Yeah, this is awesome. Okay, well, thank you so much for speaking with us. I'm excited to share it with everyone. Oh, thanks.